in um, the summer of 64 was plans and in fact was the big Mississippi Summer Freedom Project and I was clear I was going to do that but I had not told my parents because I thought that they were going to intervene so my plan with the help of SNCC and, and, and Stoughton Lynn and others was that I wasn't going to go home at the end of the school term and I was just going to write my parents and tell them what I was going to do. Um, I don't know to this day how the school found out that I was going to go and stay with SNCC people until it was time to go to Oxford, Ohio for the orientation, which I was going to help to staff. Uh, but uh, prior to the end of the school term, the, you know, the last week of school, uh, around 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, I was awakened with a tap on the door from the house mother. Uh, and when she opened, when I told her that she could come in, there was my mother uh, and my stepfather and my uncle. And they told me that they had come to take me home. And I had no choice in the matter. So that was a real shock. And basically, you know, I had I had to pack right then, and uh, they had been informed by the school that I was not planning to go home, and so they had come unannounced. They, you know, and they took me home, and so it was very. I was very angry and upset, and my mother was very upset uh, that it it had come to this, you know, so to speak, and. Um, when I, I, I wasn't even able to make a phone call, you know, to let the people at SNCC know what was going on. It was really a very, we had, they were moving quickly to get, get me into the car and get all my bags and, and to go home. So when I got home, I started making collect calls back to Atlanta, of course, to tell people what had happened. And uh, my grandmother, my father, they told me under no circumstances was I going anywhere. And I was going to stay right there in Memphis until September when I'd go back to school. And if I persisted with this, uh, I'd have to go to school there in Memphis at one of the Memphis, you know, colleges because obviously I was under the influence of very bad people. And uh, they meant me no good. And so it was a... Uh, it was a very angry and um, painful time for my grandmother and my mother and my dad and myself because I was very angry with them. And I was constantly trying to make other plans, other arrangements. And uh, so uh, Jim Foreman and others sent a money order, sent money to my house so that I could cash it and get a bus and go back and my grandmother intercepted that mail and I didn't even know it had come so when I was calling like I thought you were going to send me my fare I don't have any money you know and they say well we've already sent it didn't you get it you know and then comes another confrontation and when my grandmother says it came and I'm not going to give it to you so then I had to make arrangements for them to send money again but to someone else's house uh, which they did and then I was able to to get to get the money order and cash it and go to the Greyhound bus station and get the ticket all without them knowing what I was doing and of course uh, I was packing on the quiet and you know keeping a bag under the bed and the whole plan for the getaway and um, I had a friend who was going to pick me up and take me to the station. And so at the point that I told them what I was going to do, um, I was told that if I did, I, you know, I couldn't come back home. So I left uh, going back to Atlanta uh, with the heaviest heart I can remember ever having because a part of me really wondered if I was doing the right thing. and. I was thinking that, you know, I'm I've sort of I'm giving up my family for this new family, and I don't, you know, it was like 
I mean, you don't really know these people that well. You know, you've worked with them, you've marched with them, you you know, you might have gone to jail with them. But I mean, your 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 whole life, you're gonna at this point, are you really ready to have these people be responsible for you? Because I was thinking, you know, well, I don't have a job, I don't have any money. What am I going to do? But at the same time, I felt I had to go. So I can remember crying the whole way to Atlanta on the bus. And um, uh, I stayed with uh, Stoughton and Alice Lynn uh, uh, while we were waiting to drive up to Oxford. And uh, you know, after a couple of days and being with the old gang and all, I, I think I kind of began feeling pretty okay, but it was a scary, scary uh, time leaving home and being told if I leave, you know, if I left not to come back. 